Hello everybody on YouTube. It's good to see you guys. It's been a while since I filmed a new video, five months to be exact. I have just been enjoying life, enjoying the car. A lot of things have changed since the last video of me gutting the pre-cats. We've gone to a couple shows. No auto crossing still, but hopefully gonna be getting more involved in that next year. Let's just uh, show you guys what's new. It is winter in Wisconsin. So the MR2 has been sitting for a few weeks now and will be sitting for the next few months. First and foremost, if you remember my pre-cat video, then you probably remember the random plug that I had in the front. Well, that was due to the tow package that the car came with, which it's actually right here. I have since removed it, got rid of the tow package, got a new grill, and have removed all that, so a lot cleaner of a look. Let's take a look at the inside. So, some minor little changes. Added a yellow LED light because why not, right? Then I have a new TRD shift knob. It's a metal weighted shift knob that I got off of eBay, of course. Nothing fancy, but just adds a little bit more grip and makes it more fun to shift. Feels kind of cool. All I had to do for this to get that on was I had to remove this uh, center console here and it was fairly simple. I adjusted the boot a little bit so it sat closer to the shift knob. Underneath the boot is a rubber band keeping it in place and turned out great. Perhaps one of my favorite mods is these 3D printed climate control knobs with the midship runabout screaming chicken logo on them. Pretty cool, my flash is kind of, there we go. Kind of cool, um, they were a little bit expensive, but very unique and I really like them. Actually my OCD wants them all facing straight up. There we go, so cool little change there. Then I added, you know, a sweet little steering wheel badge, but I actually just got a new one, which I believe is in here. Yeah, so I got this one that I'm gonna be putting on Maybe next year. You can't really tell right now, but I did put on some coilovers. I went with BC Racing BR Series coilovers. These are the stock wheels right now. Spoiler, I bought some wheels for this as well. These are the stock wheels, so there's a significant amount of wheel gap right now. Um, just because my coilovers are currently set for my other wheels but I wanted to store it on the stock wheels. So yeah, I got some coilovers, sitting a little bit lower, which is nice. Now I'll show you the wheels. Don't mind the mess, but these are my Enki RF1s. They are not RPF1s. They are just RF1s. And they're wrapped in some Federal tires. Right now I'm running a square setup. These are 215.45s, R16s. The wheel specs for these Enkis are 16 by seven, plus 38 offset. They're an interesting wheel because I got them for really cheap, $200. They were severely curb rashed. And actually I taught myself how to repair curb rash. So I repaired these and then painted them. And actually the paint job was terrible. When I primered them, I didn't wash after. And you can see the fingerprints that are on these from when I painted them. So this winter, my plan is to completely re-sand them and then repaint them the correct way, both the backside and the front side. And then also I plan on 2k clear coating them so that they stay nice and protected one more note about these wheels so these are the exact same setup 16 by 7 the same size and everything 
of RPF ones that I wanted to run. So I originally bought these wheels just to kind of test fit the fitting and see how I liked it. But I kind of grew connected to these wheels because I taught myself how to repair the curb rash, sanded them, painted them the whole nine yards. I am really happy with how they turned out and how they actually look on the car. I'll throw in a couple images so you can see how it looks on the car. And so as a result, I don't think I'm going to spend the $900 plus dollars to get RPF ones. I think I'm just going to run these. I really like how they look. And I think with a decent paint job and some good clear coating, they'll look even better. All right, that's pretty much it for what I've done this year. I put some coilovers on it, put some wheels on it, got new tires, of course, removed the tow package, and then also did some little interior upgrades. Nothing special, but for owning the car for the first time this year, I told my wife I wasn't gonna mod it, besides a couple things, and uh, got away with a little bit more than that. So shout out to my wife for letting me do it. Otherwise, I'll just share with you guys what I plan on doing this winter. All right, these are the pre-facelift headlights. They're in pretty good condition. There's some hazing you can see right here. Other than that, they're in pretty dang good condition. So I actually am just ordering some facelift headlights which are better for LEDs. Um, they're more suitable for HIDs, LED headlights, and that they don't blind oncoming traffic. So I picked up some facelift headlights. They should be coming sometime this winter. Then my plan is I'm actually going to remove the lenses from these pre-facelift headlights because they're the exact same size as the facelift ones. The facelift headlights I bought were super faded, super hazy, so I got them cheaper. So my plan is to remove these lenses from the pre-face lifts. I'm gonna go ahead and restore some of the hazing that's on it, spray another thing of clear coat on them, and then I'm gonna put them on the facelift headlights that I just bought so that I get a little bit better of a projection for oncoming traffic and whatnot. I already talked about the wheels. I'm planning on sanding them, repainting them, clear coating them. Then I wanna go just a little bit lower this summer, I ended up cutting the front of my fender liner on the fronts to avoid rubbing on the front wheels because, yeah, just a little too meaty for um, the front. But I just cut a little bit of the front of the fender liner, so when I turn and whatnot, I'm not rubbing anymore. So I'm gonna to try to go a little bit lower, maybe half an inch lower, maybe an inch, but probably more on that half inch to three quarters inch of you know, lowering for next year. We'll see how it feels. I hate rubbing, it's not the end of the world, but I hate rubbing, so we'll adjust accordingly for that. Another plan I have for 2021 is I wanna put a aftermarket steering wheel in it. I'm planning on running probably a D&D Performance steering wheel. What I like about them from the research that I've done is that they have a really cool collaboration in October with Breast Cancer Awareness Month. My mom passed away from breast cancer almost eight years ago now. So it's just kind of a really cool thing that I love that they do. So I'm planning on picking up one of their breast cancer awareness steering wheels to run. And then lastly, I am saving up like crazy for an OEM hardtop. I'm a little over halfway there for saving money. I could just go buy one right now, but I promised my wife that I'd buy one, because it's definitely not a necessity, that I'd buy it out of extra money and not money that we earn you know, from our normal paychecks and whatnot. So I'm about halfway there. Here in the States, they're anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000, so they are very expensive, but I'm gonna get one because I love how they look. I think they look sweet and I'm almost there, over halfway. So we just gotta keep on saving. Maybe it'll happen 2021. 
otherwise hopefully early 2022. That's all I have planned for 2021 so far. Not planning on running a 2ZZ or anything anytime soon. My 1ZZ is just fine, burns minimal oil, only has 45,000 on it. So I'm gonna run it for as long as I can. Next year I plan on getting into autocross a little bit. So I'm looking forward to learning more about how the car handles, learning more on how to drive it. And if I somehow reach my limitations with it in my first year, then maybe I'll do some you know, under the hood stuff. But I wanna learn everything there is to know about driving a car. Um, specifically in autocross and push it to the limits. And if I outgrow it, then cool. We'll have a conversation about it then. Anyhow, that's pretty much it. Sorry, I haven't been posting much. I, I don't have any aspirations of being an actual MR2 car YouTube channel or being a big YouTuber like say Mitch Dory and some of those guys, but I do really enjoy the car. I enjoy learning and I enjoy sharing that. So I do plan on filming some stuff. I'll probably film my headlight project, the pre-facelift to facelift and whatnot, just because I think that could be really cool. And maybe I will showcase me repainting the wheels. But for now, this is probably going to be it for a while. I hope you guys are well. It's almost Christmas. Uh... <laughs> Again, it's almost Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you guys or Happy Holidays to those of you who may not celebrate Christmas. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know we're in a weird time right now, but hopefully we're almost through it. Take care. If you want to stay connected this winter, feel free to check me out on Instagram at MillersMR2. We'll see you guys later.